Hello everyone. Um, this is going to be my first ever YouTube video and I thought it'd be a good idea to do in meet all my animals video since this is going to be mainly and mainly a animal uh, channel. So I've never done this before. I've never really made any videos before and I've barely used this camera to record anything. So hopefully this comes out well. Um, I've never edited anything before. So I don't know how that's going to go, so there might be some things that should have been edited out where I'm stuttering or having an anxiety attack and I forget to edit it out, so that's going to be fun. Um, so I'm going to go grab different animals and bring them over and I'm going to show you guys all my animals. I'm going to talk a little bit about them and yeah. Alright, so the first animal that I have is one of my dumpy frogs. Let's see if it'll actually focus. Turn around. So I have six dumpy frogs in total. They're also called White's Tree Frogs. Um, I wanted to do them first because you really shouldn't handle them much and I don't want to touch other animals and then touch them because it's not good for their skin. Uh, it's very sensitive and that's why I'm wearing gloves. It's important to wear gloves when you handle any kind of amphibian. Um, this is Fui Fui. She is my smallest adult dumpy frog. She's always been very tiny. Um, oh, there she goes. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> now fui fui. Okay. So, they jump a lot. Um, yeah, there she is. And she's my only girl. I have, oh wait, no, I don't have six anymore. Sadly, one passed away. I'm getting a sixth one. Um, but one of them passed away, one of my younger ones. So I have five currently, but getting another one. Um, she's a mild snowflake. Uh, she was sold as a snowflake, which is when they have little white spots on their backs. Um, but you can barely see them. Like, they're just the teeny tiniest little white dots. So they can lose them as they get older, or they can get more as they get older. Uh, my other two are a lot bigger, but they're currently hiding inside their coconut, which you're probably not going to be able to see them. Um, I literally just took the whole coconut, but it's just pitch black on the camera, so can't even see them. You can kind of see the shine from their bodies, but those two are called um, Pat Tar and Squag. Yes, they're named after that Spongebob episode. In. But this is their favorite thing ever. They live their entire lives in this coconut. The only time they ever come out is at night because they are nocturnal. Um, they have a bioactive enclosure, which means it basically takes care of itself. I only have to do like spot cleaning and change their water. So it's dirt, it has a drainage layer, um, there's some sand, there's leaf litter, like old leaves, and then there's little critters in there called the cleanup crew. There's isopods and springtails, and springtails and isopods eat decaying matter and mold, so they'll actually eat their feces. Um, and it helps keep the cage nice and clean. And I think it's one of the best ways to go with a lot of animals. Uh, so yeah, those are my, well, one frog and two in coconut. So a boy and two girls, or a girl and two boys, already messing up. So I'm gonna go grab my smaller frogs as I touch my face with my gross frog hand. So this one's going to be even more difficult because these two are super energetic and they're constantly hopping. So this is going to be somewhat impossible and we'll probably jump at the camera. But these two don't have names yet. Um, I'm pretty sure they're both boys. You can tell they're boys when they're younger because they'll start to call. They'll start to croak to each other. Um, and the girls, oh come on focus. The girls will rarely croak and it usually sounds a bit different than the boys croak. Um, and then they'll have these little pads on the inside of like their wrists to help hang on to the females when they mate. It's actually staying so much more still than I thought he would. But this one's also a snowflake and once again has very tiny, oh I'm sorry, oh here we go, has very tiny snowflakes on his back. There he go. he's trying to eat my hand. He thinks my hand is food. They are ravenous. When you think of frogs, you don't usually think of like crazy scary monsters, but if frogs were big, we would all be dead. They would rule the world. Yeah, and he's also a, he's a blue-eyed snowflake, so I'm not sure if he's a honey snow, he's laying on my computer. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's a honey snowflake or just a snowflake. Um, we got them as just blue-eyed snowflakes, but I've also heard that you can't really have a blue-eyed unless it's honey, and he is pretty light which usually honeys are kind of like a lighter tannish color. Oh, there he goes. Right, so I'm gonna put him back and grab the other one. This one I grabbed pretty easily because he was biting me. Um, like I said before, they are ravenous. And he, they look pretty similar. This one has more snowflakes on it, if the camera would focus. Oh, and he's turning. He, he doesn't want you to see. Oh God, there he goes. 
but he's really pretty. He's very, very light. I love light frogs. <laughs> Come here. All right, so before they hurt themselves, I'm gonna put them away. So this is Citrus. Um, she is a corn snake. And she was actually the very first, I guess, exotic animal and first reptile that I ever got. She is so pretty. Her full name is Citrus Tang. Yes, I named her when I was very young. Um, but I think it's still pretty fitting. And she's a female. Uh, I didn't ever get her probed, which is like the sure way to tell if it's a boy or girl. Um, but if you look at the way her tail tapers, if she would let me show you, um, you can pretty much tell it's a female because they have a very, very thick area right before their tail starts. And that's usually a guarantee, almost a guarantee, that she's female. But I'm not breeding her or anything, so it doesn't really matter if she's a boy or a girl. She's also pretty big. She's actually about four feet long, which you can't really tell when I'm just holding her like this. And she's very old. She's in her teens now. Um, I'm not sure of her exact age. I did get her when she was very tiny, but I don't have her, her birthday off the top of my head. Um, she did come from Petco, which I didn't really know much about, like, if you should or shouldn't buy from, like, pet stores and things like that. I didn't know about breeders or conventions, so that's how I got her. Um, she's the only, I think she's the only animal I've ever really gotten at a pet store, besides my ferrets, because ferrets are impossible to find in America and they're, when they're not from a pet store or from Marshall's ferrets, which I'll get into more detail about that when we come to my ferrets. But as you, she's not a normal corn snake, um, she has, she's a morph. She is a creamsicle. She's a creamsicle corn snake. So she's actually albino. So if you look at her eyes, focus, please focus, it's kind of, kind of focusing. Oh, hello. Uh, she. <laughs> She has red eyes. They're kind of orange, but technically they're red. And that's actually not that her eyes themselves are red. Her eyes are clear. So with albino animals and people, um, their eyes are clear. And what you're seeing is actually the blood vessels behind the eyes. So pretty cool. Cool fact there. And they are native to New Jersey, which is where I live. Um, so you can find these guys in the wild. Uh, they're considered endangered in New Jersey because their population is dwindling in New Jersey only. Other places, they're not considered endangered. But there she is. She's a very good girl. Right? You're a good girl. <laughs> so, some bad news. Um, I was going to show you my king snake, my Mexican black king snake baby named Iris next. And she's gone. Um, she was in a 20 gallon tank with Aspen and all the works. And she had big, strong locks on the top. I've had her for about a year. Um, she was super feisty and crazy, or she is, and she's not dead, she's just lost. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was completely locked. I have no idea how she got out. So if you look behind me, um, my room's an absolute mess right now. I literally pulled everything off every shelf. I pulled the shelves out. I looked everywhere. So, yeah, she's missing. Um, so that's that's a great way to to have this video go. Um, so yeah, escaped animal, and she's a very very tiny little snake. She's probably like not even the width of my finger, and maybe like this long. Um, but she's very cute, and I'm hoping I'll be able to find her. She's probably seeking out heat somewhere, so my boyfriend's gonna come over after work later and help me look, because he's good at finding things. And I feel like more people looking, the better. Um, but yeah, I saw her last night in her tank cage. She was crawling around normal. She was looked hungry. I, I was literally thinking last night, oh, I need to feed her, and, and now she's not here. Um, so she's missing out on a meal. But hopefully I find her. I know a lot of people lose tiny little baby snakes and they don't usually find them. So I honestly don't have, why is it focused like that? I honestly don't have that much hope, sadly. That's a sad thing to say. and Probably not a good thing to say, but that's the truth. I want to be truthful with you. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to find her. But anyway, uh, with this beautiful mess in the background, uh, let's, let's just continue. Uh, so we're down one snake. She was just black snake named Iris and that's, that's it. I mean, 
Yeah, she probably wouldn't even want me to hold her anyway, so. <laughs> so moving away from slimy things and scaly things, well, kind of scaly, um, birds. <laughs> so this is one of my four chickens. Um, they're currently living inside. Because Yes, I hear you. Yes, shh. Uh, they're currently living inside as their coop is being built right now by my boyfriend. Um, so they're actually in my room. Makes it very dusty. It's very messy. They're loud. Um, but they go outside every day. They're outside most of the daytime and they really just like sleep in here. Uh, yeah. Um, you can't even see her. Oh. But that's, this is, this one is Moonstone. They're all named after, um, space themed things. They're very sweet chickens. A lot of people are upset when they get their chickens and like they don't love them, but you just, you gotta love them first and then they'll love you. But this is Moonstone. She is in Lavender Orpington. They're all girls, all hens, no roosters, hopefully. I don't think there are any more roosters. I got them all in their little tiny babies. They got shipped to me in the mail. All right. This one's the biggest, fattest one. And they are going to get bigger. They're still pretty young. Um, birds, in general, grow really fast, including chickens. So she has a really funny voice. Um, so that's Moonstone. And... I have three others that I will show you. So this is my next chicken. She is also a grayish color, but she is called a blue Easter Egger. Look at those feet. Look at those feet. They have dinosaur feet. They're literally dinosaurs. They're little dinosaurs. Um, they all have their own little personalities. I, I don't understand why more people don't have... Why more people don't have chickens. Does that make sense? Yeah. More people need chickens is what I'm trying to say. They are probably one of the best pets I've ever had and I've had a lot of animals. Um, they're super snuggly. They're super funny. They're so funny to watch. They're not too hard to take care of, um, especially when it comes to birds. They're definitely not too hard to take care of. They're messy. They're messy, but like as long as you have a little bit of space outside and you can have them in your county or your town or state because a lot of places have like laws against chickens, which is really weird. I hate that certain areas don't allow animals like livestock. Um, but luckily I live in an area where we do allow chickens. And this one's name is Polaris. My friend actually named her. Um, I thought it was a really cool name. And she's most people's favorites. She's so sweet. And I think she looks like a little eagle. So let me see if I can get her to do her a little. Look at that, she's a harpy eagle. Look at her. <laughs> Mom, stop. Yeah, but she is so cute. Look at her. She's so fuzzy and fluffy and soft. Ooh, they're so sweet. They're just, chickens are so sweet. I highly, highly suggest a chicken. Get chickens. Just get chickens right now. Go buy. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> she's already making her weird noises. Um, the next one up is Borealis. Another moon-themed name. Um, she's crazy. She's, she's crazy chicken. Uh, she likes to go... <laughs> She likes to go on people's heads. That's her favorite thing to do, is like stand on your head and rip your skull open. Uh, it's kind of graphic. But that's what she likes to do. She likes to hurt people. Um, but she also sounds like a, like a dinosaur. Um, but she is a barred rock. Yeah. And that's, that's Borealis. This is my boyfriend's favorite. And he's her favorite. He loves, or she loves him. She will, as soon as she sees him, she starts going brrr, making all the chicken noises and just jumps on his, his shoulders, his head, and just goes crazy and hurts him. <laughs> but she doesn't know she's hurting him. She loves him. Yeah, but I can, like, she's on my lap right now. Like, I'm literally just, oh god, I'm literally just petting a chicken on my lap. Like, chickens are just amazing. Oh, there she goes. Okay, so I'm literally sweating from catching this chicken. Um, she's crazy. Uh, she's sweet, but she's crazy. She's really skittish, so she's not like mean or anything. Um, not chickens, they're not mean. People say they're, they're not. Um, but this is Nova. <laughs> My boyfriend named her. And she is just the prettiest chicken. Look at those feet. Look at those feet. But she is literally the prettiest chicken. Look at that face. And she's also an Easter Egger, so she is a snowy Easter Egger. It's like a designer breed. Easter Eggers are actually a mix of different kinds of chickens. 
um, to get like a really pretty egg. So they'll have like green eggs, they'll have blue eggs, teal eggs, sometimes they'll lay pinkish, whitish, brownish, like it, they lay all different colors, which is why they're called Easter Eggers. Um, yeah, so she's, she's kind of, she's kind of skittish and she's loud, but she's beautiful. Look at it, look at her. You're so pretty, Nova. So pretty, Nova. Yeah. All right, so for this guy, I won't be taking him out because he's very hungry. Um, and he's not the friendliest. Uh, but this is Parthrenax. We call him Parthy. No one ever calls him Parthrenax. Um, he's named after the White Dragon in Skyrim. And he is a blue tegu. And he's hungry. <laughs> um, he has lots of toys to play with. He has a big water bowl. He has his basking area. And it's very important that Tegus have a lot of area to dig. So he has a big area to dig. This is not his permanent home. Um, we're going to be building him after we build the chicken coop. We're going to build him like an actual big solid enclosure. But right now he's in what's called a grow tent, which a lot of people use to house their larger lizards. It holds humidity and heat in very, very well. Um, it's not the prettiest. Also, you can't really plant things with tegus because they just destroy them immediately. So he doesn't get any pretty plants, unlike my frogs, who have a nice bioactive setup with lots of pretty plants. Um, but he's a very cool lizard. Um, he can get up to four feet. He's still young, so he's not fully grown yet. Yeah. He's probably my most expensive animal. Oh, big yawn. Oh, wipe the face. <laughs> he's so funny after he eats he'll wipe his face on things and sometimes he'll wipe it on like my pants and it's disgusting because he eats raw meat so it's just not ideal to have raw meat rubbed all over your pants all right getting back to animals i can hold <laughs> i mean i can hold parthy but i just rather not get my arm torn off on video um and a lot of people say tegus are like always puppy dog tame they're not always puppy dog team. I've been working with him since he was a tiny little baby. I used to, I mean, I still do, like, I'll sit in the tent with him for hours, and he is just so scared and skittish, and, like, all his, all his husbandry is spot on. Everything is spot on. Like, I have, um, lots of different probes and stuff in there to test the temperature. I have, like, a heat gun, and everything's perfect. He's just not a people tag you. Um, I mean, maybe one day he will be, like, he's kind of going through pu tegu puberty right now. They call it the terrible twos, even though he's not two yet. He's a little over a year. Um, so he's still really young, so he might grow out of it. The more I work with him, maybe a miracle will happen, but we're, we're trying. Anyway, um, mm, the smell of cyanide. Uh, <laughs> so this is my little desert millipede, called a giant desert millipede. And she's very shy. She's probably not going to come out. I had two of them. The other one passed away. Um, the other one was a golden morph. So it was like gold with stripes. It was very pretty. And she was super, super, um, what is the word? She, she was not camera shy. She would, she would come right out and she would crawl all over the place as soon as you took her out. But this girl right here is very scared. And they actually um, produce cyanide so that way animals won't eat them. So, if you ever pick up a millipede and you smell it, it's not a great smell. Yeah, but I just call her Chocolate. I think that's a cute name, Chocolate. The other one's name was Honey. They're both girls, and you can tell if they're a girl or a boy by how many legs they have on the very front, which I can't really show you because this is what I'm getting right now. <laughs> this is all I'm getting from her. Um, but yeah. So these next animals aren't the most exciting and probably not something you guys expected to see. But, oh, they're not in here. They're still in here. I'm trying to get them to move right now because, as you can see, this is, oh, you can barely see it. But this is disgusting. Like, they prefer to live in just this mold and decaying stuff, no water, instead of moving into their nice new test tube. That is, it's dusty because there's chickens in here, but, um, nice new test tube that's not moldy. You probably can't even see them because it's so dirty, but there is an ant right there, a queen carpenter ant. And she has her brood, she has eggs, um, she has pupae, and she also has her workers. Uh, let's see if I can get a better... Over here I have another queen and her workers. This one should probably come out a little better. You could 
probably see her. Let's see. Let's go like this. You can kind of see her. But there's a queen ant. You can see her butt sticking out. And then you see all the workers. But they're really cool. I actually caught these girls. Um, they'll have nuptial flights. Well, the males and females will go and they'll mate. And they have wings. And then they lose their wings. And then they will wander around looking for a place to start their nest. And if you catch a queen, you can give her a place to start her nest where she's safe. Um, this is like their little outworld, it's called. And you put food here. You just kind of seal it off. You can add different tubes and stuff. And there's tons of different brands of um, ant gear, they call it. Uh, but this is the one I have right now. And it works pretty well. It's actually 3D printed. But yeah, I have three colonies right now. I have this one. I have this one and then I have in here another disgusting messy colony because they don't want to move into their new clean tube. Ants can be pretty frustrating. They're um, little sugar ants. They're also called odorous house ants. They're the ones that you'll find in your kitchen all the time. Like why would you have this as a pet? What a weird thing. But I think ants are really cool. They're fun to watch. Um, you're basically starting a little kingdom. You have like a little world right in your right in your hands. Um, yeah, There's a lot of leftover food and stuff in there because they have a nice clean tube on the bottom there but they don't want to move in. These are their two dirty tubes, and that's their clean one. So they're stuck in there right now. Mudsy! So in addition to having a lot of exotic animals, I also have cats. And believe it or not, cats are probably one of my top favorite animals. Um, this is, <laughs> this is Muds. Say hi, Muds. He's named after the gorillas. He's named after Murdoch from the gorillas band. Or gorillas, not the gorillas. Oh, say hello. But he's just a tabby cat. He's a mixed breed. Um, his dad and mom are actually brother and sister. Uh, it was an oops litter. He's inbred. But he doesn't have any problems. It was only one generation. Um, things like mice can actually breed for many generations before having any problems. And he's a really good boy. He's just a big mush. You can do anything you want to him. He's just... Oh, big yawn. Yes. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, hello, Stuart. So this is Stuart. He's also named after the Gorillas band members. So he's named after 2D, whose actual name is Stuart Pot. I used to be absolutely obsessed with Gorillas. I mean, I still am, but it was like a whole thing. But this is Stuart and his mud's brother. He looks just like his dad. And he's kind of more of an energetic cat. He's, he's like a little mini cheetah. He loves to run around and he likes to play with like anything. He'll find any object and he'll find a way to play with it and have fun with it. And he loves boxes. My boyfriend actually built him a little like castle called Stu's Box that I will show you that he absolutely loves. And I'm surprised he's not on top of it right now or in it right now. So this is Stu's box, labeled as so. We have an interior, yes, very roomy. And then we have a rooftop lounge. And as you can see, he enjoys it very much from all the rips and tears. Um, and then he has this little side deck, this little outdoor patio, a little catio. So that's where Stuart spends most of his time, in Stu's box, and we call him Stu. All right, next up we have some very smelly animals and she doesn't even know I'm here because she's deaf. <laughs> Hello, oh, there she is. Hello, she can't even hear me. Um, so this is Lola. So I have Lola and I have Cody, my two ferrets. Oh, and they are so sweet. Lola's my favorite, don't tell Cody. Um, but she's so sweet, she'll actually ask to be held by jumping up on your arm like this. Oh, there she is. This is not a very good angle. You're like upside down. Oh, here comes Cody. There he is. They're in a big two-story ferret nation, so they have plenty of room to play. Um, originally they were separated because they used to fight over food a lot. <laughs> Oof. No. No. Oh, here she goes. Oh, she's climbing me. 
Uh, but Lola used to be a panda ferret. I mean, she still technically is a panda ferret. That's when they have like markings on their head, tail, and arms, but not really much on their body. Um, but she actually has Wardenburg syndrome. So any ferret really that looks kind of similar to Lola that doesn't have red eyes, not an albino ferret, just a white ferret or white marked ferret, um, well, is caused by Wardenburg syndrome, um, which people can actually get it to. It causes usually blue eyes, a white stripe in your hair, and a widened nasal bridge and widened bridge between your eyes. So it can cause hearing problems, which is why Lola here is deaf. But she's a happy ferret. There's nothing wrong with her. She's just looks a little different and she can't hear, but she doesn't even know that she can't hear. And then Cody, he was supposed to be a cinnamon. He is definitely not a cinnamon. Um, I think he's a chocolate, which is his color. <laughs> and that's raw chicken. That's disgusting. They like to knock it off their plate. Um, but my ferrets are raw fed, so they eat something called a Franken-Prey diet. So it's basically you take a bunch of different parts of animals and over a course of about a week, you feed them those parts. So heart, liver, different organs, brain, bones, um, muscle meat. So they're a very steady, good diet. Uh, keeps them a lot healthier. Ferrets can't process anything but meat products or egg. So they're obligate carnivores. So they can't have any fruits or vegetables or even grains. And all ferret food that you get that's commercial made that comes in like the pellet form or the kibble form is actually um, not good for them. So even the highest rated brands are not good for ferrets and can cause a lot of problems, um, including ferret diabetes called insulinoma, um, which my previous ferret actually died from, which is one of the reasons I took the, the dive into raw feeding. But before you raw feed any animals, you wanna make sure you know exactly what you're doing. You can get mentors to help you through the process and um it is definitely a process and a lot of animals it takes a while to, to oh my goodness to um switch them over to a raw diet if they weren't fed that from when they were little um luckily these guys were fed that from since they were little babies oh my gosh oh my gosh all right that that's that's enough of that in in you get your hand stuck so over in this corner, I have this little boa. Well, he's not really little. Um, his name is Mordecai. He is not a red-tailed boa. He is just a common boa. A lot of people mix them up. The ones sold in pet stores are not red-tailed boas, even if they're labeled as such. That's just a way to get people to buy them. Um, but a red-tailed boa looks a little different, has a lot more of a reddish color on their tail. But he was actually sold to my cousin as a red-tailed boa when he was little. Um, and then my cousin left and moved away and gave him to me. And he was a very, very territorial, not aggressive, snakes aren't really aggressive, they're just scared, uh, snakes. So he was kind of crazy, but now he's the calmest thing ever. Uh, I actually bring him to fairs so little kids can take pictures with him and he's super docile and super sweet. Um, but he's, he's chilling right now and there's a lot of stuff on top of his enclosure that I have to take off to get him out. So I'm just gonna show you him through the glass. <laughs> um, he is also getting an enclosure built for him. So when we're building the Tegu enclosure, we're going to be building him a nice big enclosure where he has like a, I want to give him like a nice big branch to climb because he loves to climb. That's probably his favorite thing to do. And then in this corner here, we have cockroaches, which a lot of people are like, ew, why do you have cockroaches? Well, there's two reasons. One reason is because they are here to help me feed my other animals. So a lot of animals will eat doobier roaches. There's not many in here. This is like a not as full bin. But here's a boy. The boys have wings. Oh, focus, please. Focus. Okay. But that's a doobier roach. Oh. Um, so there's a bunch of them in here. It's a whole colony of them and I breed them. So that way I have things to feed to my other animals without having to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. And here are pets, which are also in need of a cage upgrade. I want to give them like an actual bioactive enclosure and make it really cool. Uh, but they're just hanging out in here right now. And these are Madagascar hissing roaches. I'm actually allergic to them. I'm going to sneeze actually. <coughs> I'm actually allergic to them. So I cannot take them out right now. I get hives all over my body. They actually produce um, a mold and their frass, which is actually their poop, is, um, you can develop an allergy to it. So I'm not gonna be taking them out. Uh, there's also little babies in here. So they had babies and the babies can escape from this. So they live in here where they can be a lot more humid and I can kind of control how much they eat a little bit more than if they were in here. Now this is one of my favorite enclosures that I have 
Um, we actually just put it together, not put it together, but decorated it. Um, it is for Anolis. So we have four of them in here. Pretty sure it's two boys and two girls. Um, we haven't had any aggressive um, aggression issues or anything like that. They've all been super good to each other, no problems. Um, once again, not going to take them out because they will just escape, and they could also drop their tails, and I don't want to stress them out, as these guys were wild. They came in on palm trees that came from Florida and then went to where I work, so everyone there knows I have a ton of animals, so they're like, here you go, here's another Anoli. Uh, let's see, can I, can I get you to focus on him? No. Please? Please? Oh! Of course, it's not going to focus. Oh, please focus. Oh, kind of. Oh, there's one of them. That's the smallest one. Um, their names are Norm, Funnel Cake, and um, Stumpy, because he lost his tail and then grew it back. And then this little one right here is the newest edition, and her name is Reptar. But yeah, they have a really cool enclosure. It's also bioactive. There are springtails in here that eat all the poop and any decaying matter. Um, there's no live plants in here because I'm not using soil. I'm just using moss and the leaf litter, so I don't have any live plants. But there is real wood. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys were able to see that, but she just jumped as far as she possibly could. And they're very skittish, so that's one of the reasons. Oh, wait, wow, I didn't even see this one right here. There's one. This this looks awful. It's not focusing, but there's there's one. I'm pretty sure that one's Norm. He's the most normal one. Funnel Cake is missing a foot. Stumpy was missing his tail. Um, and then the other one is just super tiny. So we called him Norm because he's like the only normal one. We're not sure if it's a boy or a girl. If it's a girl, we'll just call it Norma. All right. So the next and last, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, no, there's still one more thing after this. Um, second to last animals I'm going to be showing you is my ball python collection. I guess you could call. Oh wait, no. Wow. There's a couple more animals I haven't shown you. Um, but my ball python collection. People call it a collection because most people who get a ball python, you can't have just one. You got to get more. Um, so I have four right now, and I am planning on breeding them. I've done lots of research. I've wanted to do this since I was like five. Um, but uh, we have three boys and one girl. Uh, the girl is the biggest one. They're all named after different um, different desserts, I guess you could call it. So let me see if I can get her out. Oh god. That was not her trying to bite me. That was me just dropping everything on the ground. Here she is. So this is Cupquake. Let me just move that that way. Please focus. Here we go. So this is Cupquake. The lighting down here is terrible, so you're not going to be able to see her full beauty or any of their full beauties. Um, but she is a pastel, lesser possible yellow belly. So she might be a three gene snake, but we're guaranteed that she is a two gene snake at least. And she is my cheapest ball python morph, but I think she is the prettiest. Um, her eyes are kind of a greenish yellow, which you're probably not going to be able to see. She's mad, she doesn't want to look at the camera. Yeah, they just look black in this lighting, but her eyes are beautiful greenish yellow. She kind of looks like a dragon to me. Um, and she's my biggest, she's nowhere near breeding size yet. She needs to get a little bit bigger. Oh, my grandma just turned the light on. <laughs> that helps. Um, look. But these guys come from Africa and they spend basically their whole lives living in termite mounds. Um, so they don't really move around much. I do take them out for exercise here and there, but they spend most of their time in their hides. They don't really come out, they don't really climb or they don't even really burrow. I did try to give them a lot of substrate to burrow, but they just stay on top of it. Um, so yeah, they spend most of their time just sleeping, chilling, waiting for their next food item. Hey. So that's Cupquake. I know she's not named after the YouTuber. I didn't even know that YouTuber existed until I named her Cupquake and people were like, oh, after the YouTuber? I was like, who? No, I just thought the name was cute. Cause we live near a place called Cheesequake and I was like, Cupquake, I don't know. All right, and then we have, just set down these, my first male ball python. This 
is my banana Mojave ball python and he's hiding his face and he's actually grown quite a lot. I feel like in the past day he's grown. He looks giant to me. Um, but he's almost always coiled up. Oh, he's gonna prove me wrong. He's gonna actually climb. Ooh. Hey. Hey yo. And his eyes are just black. That's a normal ball python eyes, usually black. Mud, muds, no. Mudsy. No, no. Muds is drinking out of the snake bowl. That's gross. Don't do that. You're gonna get salmonella. <laughs> hey yo. Focus. And his name is Custard. I didn't even say his name. So they all start with C, and they're all desserts. And that's how I'm gonna try to keep it, but I feel like I'm gonna run out of names pretty quickly. But there he is. And then my next male, these are my two newest, I guess newest snakes. Um, so this one, she's very feisty, or he, I'll say she. He's very, very feisty and is always trying to bite me. Um, but he, he's so tiny. So this one right here, he's a soul sucker. That's his morph, it's called a soul sucker. Um, and his name is, I'm forgetting my own snake's name. Uh, Cake Pop, oh my God. He was the last snake I named, so I feel like he should be the one I remember. Um, but this is Cake Pop. And he's my boyfriend's favorite snake that I have. He's very cute. And I wish it would focus so you could see. And I wish the lighting was better so you could see how pretty he was. I have to do a video on natural light of them. Stuart, no, no, no. My cat's trying to knock over my camera. But there he is. Oh. And then the last snake that I have, who is, looks very hungry, and who still has shed on her his head. So he just is finishing up shedding and his whole body did the most perfect clean shed, but he has a little bit of shed stuck on in his head. That all rhymes, Stuart no. Stuart no, Stuart, do it, do it. So you can see he has shed stuck here and I'm gonna put him in a humidity box, it's called. It's kind of like you put a bunch of paper towels in warm water and you stick them in there for a little bit and it helps them get the shed off. You don't really wanna soak most reptiles, especially ball pythons, as it just stresses them out and it doesn't really do anything for shed. People swear by it, it's it's like an older practice that needs to go away because it just stresses animals out. And it can make them have a bowel movement a little bit too soon. Um, so you wanna make sure they're going to the bathroom on their own and you don't have to put them in water because then you're just kind of masking what might actually be wrong with them. Um, so yeah, there he is, this is Custard with his, his shed on his head. <laughs> it's just like right there, right there. Whoa. Yay. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. And it's, it's feeding time, so they're all very hungry. <laughs> and both of these have blue eyes, so the last one I should, hey, stop it. The last one I showed you um, has blue eyes, and then so does he. And he is a crystal. He's a crystal ball python. All right, so next, this is the second to last one. We have my rats, and they're all girls, all females. Um, she was supposed to be snake food, and not for my snakes. My snakes all eat frozen thawed rats and mice. Um, but she, the snake didn't eat her. So she just sat there and you can't really just leave a rat in with a snake because the rat will actually end up eating the snake. So I took her in and she was just a teeny tiny baby. Um, and you'll see she has what looks like a warthog tooth. Look at that. Look at her little warthog tooth. Um, it does get trimmed. Uh, she's a little overdue for another trim. Um, but luckily it didn't grow like up into her mouth. It just grows out this way. She still eats and everything perfectly fine. She's also very old. She's almost three years old now and rats usually only live about two years. So she is an elderly rat. But she's super sweet, super friendly. She's a Himalayan, 
which is her little markings here. Oh, bless you. I tickled her nose too much. And this is my next rat. This is Squid. Hey, hey, Squid. But she is just a big ball of hungry. <laughs> she's always hungry and she's always looking for things to chew on. But she's also super snuggly. Um, she has this really cute little white marking on her belly. So she's considered a self black. That's like her color. But she does have that white marking on her belly. So she's technically not a full self black. Um, she's a Dumbo though. So you'll see her ears kind of point downward and they're a little bit bigger than Yolandi's. Yolandi's ears, um, she's a top eared rat and then she's a Dumbo eared rat. Right? No. No, this is not the same rat. This is a very sharp clawed, painful rat called Winnie, who was, uh, who came with Squid. So her and Squid came together. <sighs> My cat. Um, and she's not, I mean, she's friendly, but she's not as doesn't like people as much. She'd rather just be take to herself and be by herself. Um, but you have to have rats together with other rats or they get depressed and they can actually get sick from that. Squid is escaping, hold on. All right, so my last animals. Oh God, I can't get the key off. Oh. There we go. My last animals are actually outside. and I need a key to get to them. These are some of my newest additions. Can you hear them? Oh boy. All right, let's turn it around. Here we go. <gasps> Here they are. Oh, they're freaking out. Oh, we're freaking out. Hello. Hello, girls. So these are my ducks. Um, I got them kind of around the same time that I got the chickens. They're very loud. They are all girls. Oh. <laughs> so this one right up in front right here, that's um, Juniper. And then this one right here is Jubilee. And the one in the back there with the little eye makeup is Juliet. So we have Junie, Julie, and Juby. And this is their like nighttime area. So they've got their food, which I'm gonna take out because it's almost empty. They've got water, and what they actually do is it's a, called a dunking station, so it needs to be refilled. But um, they dunk their heads in that. So, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, she's so happy! Oh, she's so happy! She's actually flirting right now. So that's what female ducks do when they when they really like another duck. Um, but she does it to me, so I think she thinks I'm a male duck. Oh. Bless you. Uh, they're all blue Swedish ducks. Oh, she sees something. <laughs> Itchy. Hi. And I'm probably going to do another video, like, just on them, all about them, because ducks are one of my favorite animals in the whole world, and they're so fun, and there's so many funny things they do, and it is getting dark out right now, so it's they're kind of scared, and they just want to go to sleep and hide, because um, ducks, ducks are prey animals. They're very much prey animals. Everything wants to eat a duck. They're, like the phrase, a sitting duck. That's what they are. They're sitting ducks. Uh, yeah, so... That's, that's all of the animals that I have um, at this time, excluding, excluding my poor snake that decided it'd be a good idea to escape today. Um, so that's awesome. You don't really know what I'm going to do about that. My room is now an absolute disaster. And raccoons can get in here, so always want to lock it up real good. There we go. Make sure it's locked. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to make another video as kind of like an update on what's going on with my king snake and if she was found. Um, I'm kind of worried because my chickens are in the same room as her, and even though the chickens aren't really near her and I don't see how she would get to them, chickens eat little snakes, so... Hopefully that's not what happened. Um, 
but she's so funny she's so cute and i really hope i'll be able to show you guys her i'm just kind of rambling on now it's cold outside so goodbye i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh leave a thumbs up please subscribe i think i have like two subscribers right now and i just really want to share my animals with everyone i want to just show people all the fun things about animals and kind of get rid of the stigma surrounding like things like cockroaches and snakes and even lizards and even chickens even in areas where it's um very uptight and stuff and they they don't allow or fa don't allow farm animals because it's like dirty but they're not dirty they're amazing they're amazing pets um yeah so hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this and i'll see you in my next video